What's up guys, we're back with another epic video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my entire PSA graded Yu-Gi-Oh collection. Every single card I have graded by PSA for Yu-Gi-Oh. It's going to be pretty awesome, but before that, the giveaway. I'll be giving away these three foils we have pulled on videos and streams recently. All old school uh, legacy reprint cards. So all you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, and let me know your favorite card from the collection. Okay, so there's a lot of cards here, probably like 60 or 70 cards. It's not as much as you might think I might have, or maybe it's more, I'm not sure. Before we start, for all the people who don't know what PSA grading is, PSA is a company that grades Yu-Gi-Oh! and other cards. So you send in your card, you pay a fee, and they give you a grade on a scale of 1 to 10 based on the condition of the card. So if it gets a PSA 10 or a Gem Mint 10, it's worth a lot more than if it's just an ungraded Yu-Gi-Oh card. So that's important to, to uh, realize for the values of this. So I'm going to go through these somewhat in order, but not in any super specific order. We have the Trihorn Dragon PSA 5. Yeah, my lowest graded card, I believe. PSA 5 Trihorn Dragon. This one we pulled in Los Angeles when I went down there and made that quarter million dollar deal with Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh. That was a lot of fun. You guys can check out that video right there. It was one of my favorite videos to ever like release. I thought it was really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you guys why this got a 5. It got that crimp up there. So basically, they sealed the pack onto the card rather than when you have a booster pack. The cards go inside and they seal it on the top and the bottom. Instead, one of the cards, which was this one, had slid up so it sealed onto the top of the card and you can see that right there that indention so that's pretty cool a really unique card i pulled this myself which was just insane in a parking lot right in front of a bank so that was funny but uh yeah that's the first one all right this we're gonna go through my lb card so we have the guy the fierce knight this is a first edition so this is how you tell first edition right here if it's unlimited it will not say anything there if it's limited it'll say limited right there and limited by the way is not that special. A lot of new Yu-Gi-Oh people, they come back and they're like, I have limited cards. Is it worth a lot? And it's like, no. Limited just means that it's actually not that limited. It means there's a ton of them. It's kind of kind of weird. So this is an LOB First Edition Ultra Rare. Pretty rare card at this point. Um, graded PSA 10. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to have the values pop up. I don't know the values off the top of my head. They've changed a lot recently. Some have gone down. Some have gone up since our last PSA video. But it's still worth probably a good amount. Here is the second PSA 10 Ultra Rare that I own. So there's 10 Ultra Rares in LOB. I own at least two. We'll show you guys more in a minute. I don't want to spoil it. But uh, First Edition Monster Reborn, you guys have seen this one before. We pulled this on the channel. Jan and I, well, I opened it January, but we released the video March 2020. The most viewed video on my channel. So you guys can uh, go check that out if you want. Just filter it to most viewed. And you guys, if you haven't seen the LOB First Edition box opening, there you go. We also have another one of those, so there's two of them on the channel. Here's the last Ultra Rare from LOB in first edition that I own in PSA 10. So I picked this one up recently. Same guy who sold me that TP1 box sold me this card. So this is pretty cool to own. Uh, an old label, you guys can see the old cert number. I think they're in the 5 millions now rather than the, uh, or sorry, they're in the 50 millions now rather than the 40 million or the 20 million. So it's been a long time since this one was graded, but still really cool to own this. So I own three out of the 10 in LOB. It's pretty cool. Next, we have a, a bundle. We got the two holes. We got the double hole, PSA 10, dark hole, and trap hole. This one I graded myself. I did not pull it, but I did grade it. This one I also graded, but I also didn't pull. So neither of those I pulled, but I graded both of these, which is ironic because when I've actually pulled stuff from LOB, I've only graded one PSA 10. So it's insane. Like one for 14, I think. And when I, it comes to cards that I didn't pull, I've had a lot better luck. Obviously, here's more than I've graded total in just these two cards. So really cool LOB first edition cards. This one's wavy and this one's glossy. If you have questions about that, uh, that's going to have to be a different video, glossy and wavy. Next, we have some more LOB supers. Uh, these are not PSA 10. So I have a seven. This one is Rhyme, from Rhyme Style. He gave me this card in a our Christmas box exchange kind of thing. It was a cool video. He sent me a lot of really cool stuff. I sent him some cool stuff and we opened it on video. He sent me a PSA 7 wavy first edition Raigeki, which was like really, really cool. I'm really happy to own this. Um, then we have this Swords Revealing Light, which I believe it's this one. Maybe it's not this one, but I did. I know this one I'm supposed to be selling today. The guy has not paid me yet. So technically I still own it. <laughs> Polymerization, we pulled this in my very first LOB first edition box. The one with the red eyes, the one with the monster reborn. This one is the one that I got in a collection. It graded an eight just because of the centering, basically, which was pretty brutal. But yeah, there's just some more super rares from LOB that were not tens. Here comes an oddball. PSA 7 raised body heat. So I posted this one. A ton of people acted like they were going to buy it, and nobody ever did. So I still own it. PSA 7 raised body heat common. It's a short print. I think it may be a super short print. 
the only comment I own left. I've, I've graded tons of comments. I've sold a bunch of them. And so this is the last, the last man standing. Pretty cool card. Um, but I will probably sell it in the future. It's not worth too much. Next, we have our Metal Raiders first edition Gym Mint cards. So we have Summon Skull, B Skull Dragon, and the Metal Raiders Magic Jammer first edition cards, all Gym Mint 10. So the values I'll slowly have popping up. Um, these two are worth a ton of money. This one's not worth as much, but still worth a decent amount since it is for Metal Raiders. I pulled both of these in the same box and both graded 10. Metal Raiders often does have pretty easy to grade cards when you pull them but still awesome to pull two cards and grade them both because obviously lob is not that easy this one i got in a trade if you guys saw that trade where i traded away a guy the dragon champion first edition legend of blue eyes psa 10 which is really tough to get i got this and several other cards you'll see soon so there's my metal raiders psa 10 ultra set we do have one more metal raiders card it's a first edition karibo so um it's just a super rare we won't spend too long on it but i did grade this one myself i got this one from Kanye West on YouTube, also not the not the main Kanye West, but the Yu-Gi-Oh Kanye West, also known as Thug Noodles on Instagram. Really cool guy. He sold me this raw and I graded it a 10. I'm sure he wasn't happy about that, but really cool card. Here's my only Magic Ruler PSA card right now. So I've owned a lot of Magic Ruler PSA cards, but they've been sold, they've been traded, whatever. This one is the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon we pulled in a video, I think in 2019 at this point, a long time ago and I graded a PSA 10, so this is really, really awesome. First edition card, I think the box was only like $800 back then or something like that. It was much cheaper than it is now. So pretty cool to own this one, and especially since I pulled it. Next, we have my only Pharaoh Servant graded card, my PSA 10 Genzo, also pulled in 2019 from a box. Both of these secrets were pulled from boxes that I purchased from Trihorn Genzo on Instagram. He <laughs> He's regretted it every day since. He always tells me that he's mad he sold them to me but I still appreciate him doing that. It was awesome to get the content out there, to get these awesome cards pulled and graded tens, just insane. So a beautiful Genzo. I love owning this one, one of my favorite cards. Next, we have a couple of Labyrinth of Nightmare cards. By the way, we're opening a 36 pack first edition Labyrinth of Nightmare box live tomorrow. So check that out. This should be Tuesday. It's gonna be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. Barring the bar the box uh, gets lost in the mail or something. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Labyrinth the Nightmare. Here are two first edition cards. We have the Masked Beast, which is amazing. One of the coolest artworks. First edition PSA 10. And then we have a Dark Necrofear, a fan favorite. I mean, a creepy card. Look at that. Poor baby. The doll has no head. That is sketchy. Very cool looking cards, though. The reason I bought them, I picked them up quite a long time ago at this point. I think it was from Yu-Gi-Oh! First Day Collector. He sold me these, and they were around like maybe like 300 bucks each, I think, at the time. So they're worth more than that now. Really nice cards. Next, we have some cards from Dark Crisis. We have the Vampire Lord First Edition PSA 10. Also was in that trade with the Summon Skull. We've got Shinado, King of the Higher Plane. I bought this one from Cool Trainer Ryan, I believe, for like $200. I can't remember. It, was, it, was, it wasn't it was much, because um, at the time, it, was, it wasn't worth much. So Skull Arch Fiend of Lightning. I really don't know what it's worth now. It might not be worth that much. Skull Arch Fiend of Lightning was also in that deal where I picked up the Labyrinth of Nightmare, Mass Beast, and uh, Dark Necrofear. So I got all these quite a while ago, except this one. This one's semi-recent. All three Dark Crisis PSA 10 cards. I think these are all the cards I really necessarily want from Dark Crisis besides Exodia Necros. So I have three out of the four I want. I did have a 9.5 Exodia Necros, but you guys know how I feel about BGS. I just don't like the cases very much. They don't stack with my other cards. It just doesn't fit in. So that's the reason I got rid of that. Next, we have my one Magician's Force card. We have a PSA 10 Magician's Force Dark Paladin. Really awesome. I no longer have my Dark Magician Girl that I had. I did sell that one. This one, uh, I'm more of a fan of this card over Dark Magician Girl. So this is really, really cool to have. Really cool artwork. I don't have the corrected art one. I do have the error art, which is this one. The corrected art was the one that you had to send this card in if you pulled it. They would actually send you the correct card, which nobody actually did, so that's why that card's sort of rare at this point. So um, this is the one I have. The other one, maybe one day we'll pick that up, but people want way too much money for it. And yeah, I'm not paying, I'm not paying for it. Then we have two of the three big boys. We have Chaos Emperor Dragon and Blackluster Soldier, the Envoys, the Envoy of the beginning and the Envoy of the end. Pretty awesome two cards, both graded PSA 10 from one of the hardest to find booster boxes out there. I still have not opened that one. It's the only booster box in first edition from the first 11 sets I've not opened. So maybe one day we'll open that up. If you have it you don't want, and you want to sell it to me for not like 50K, that'd be great. You know, it'd be awesome. So these two are really cool. I got these in the trade for the Gaia. You guys have probably seen that video if you haven't. I'll try and link it up there. 
But uh, yeah, awesome cards, two of my favorite stones. So I'm really happy about owning these. Finally, to wrap up the first 11 sets, we have two cards from Ancient Sanctuary. So I pulled this in one of my, actually my very first vintage box opening. I opened Ancient Sanctuary, first edition. The lighting was pathetic. It was like I was opening it in the dark, basically. It was awful. You guys got to check that video out. It's hilarious. I think I had like 200 subs at the time. I pulled this card. It was super awesome. Graded it a 10, one of my first graded cards. Then in my second or third box, I opened three boxes of Ancient Sanctuary. This, actually four now because of the box break. So we pulled this one. I graded this one a 10. I also pulled a Burst Stream. I ended up selling that one, unfortunately, which is kind of sad. So the set's broken up, but still, these two cards are really awesome. So nice to own these. Next, we're gonna get into some tournament pack cards. You guys have seen most of these, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through them semi-quick. We have the Morphing Jar, one of my rarest cards, PSA 10, rare in terms of value. I don't really, you know, it's hard to justify what's rare or what's not, but this seems to be a really rare card. Uh, I think there's like 22 or 23 PSA 10s, so not many of them, uh, really nice card. Um, it does have this little nick at the top that PSA actually did when they graded it, which is very, very sad, but it still get, did get a 10. I'm sure some people will be tilted by that, but I graded this in 2019. Back in 2019, stuff got through uh, quite a bit. You know, 20, 2021, you're not, probably would not get a 10 on this card, but still a really nice one. Uh, still worth a ton of money, even, even with that damage. The next one we have the Royal Decree. That's a TP4 PSA 10. So this one, I think I got this for 600 bucks, I think. $600 a couple years ago. Uh, it's worth a lot more than that now because this is like a pop six or no, a seven now. I think it was graded. The seventh one has been graded. Pop seven, that's pretty low for Yu-Gi-Oh. There's only seven of them. It does have like a missing E. or Okay, maybe it's not missing. It's just not very bright, but a pretty cool ultra to own. Next, we have the Luminous Soldier. This is the TP5 ultra. I got this from Yu-Gi-Oh 2. I think for 210 bucks, I think, or something like that. Because I don't think he would take 200. He would only take like 210. It was something like that. So I got this from him. Really awesome friend of mine and uh, has a YouTube channel. So you guys can check him out. Uh, cheap price for that at this point, but it's still probably not that expensive. Maybe it's like a $1,000 card, which is still quite a bit. But for what it is, the rarity, it's not very much. Then we have another TP Ultra. This one's from the one and only Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh. I bought this... All, most of my cards I bought were in 2019, maybe 2020. I really don't buy too many PSA graded cards anymore because the prices are really expensive. I try to grade most of my stuff. It's just hard nowadays because you can't really grade because PSA is closed. And then the, even the raw prices are very expensive. So I've, I occasionally buy a graded card, but most of the time I'm sticking with my old stuff. So I got this from Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh. It was like 300 bucks, 325, something like that. Yeah, I think he had like two or three at the time. So he's he has always had like three of everything. You know, the guy has everything. So you guys can check him out on YouTube if you want, but... Very cool card. Then we have the DD Warrior, the TP7 PSA 10. I got this at auction for like less than $200, like 170 something dollars. I remember bidding on it. I was prepared to pay like 300 something dollars because I knew it was one of the only ultras I needed. And uh, it went for like 175 or like 174 or something like that. I was so hyped. I paid right away. I was like, please ship this, please. I didn't want him to cancel it. But at the time it really wasn't that low. It was a little bit low. I think it was maybe like a 200 something dollar card. But that was still crazy. Getting it for like 174 or whatever. I think the raw price was like 100 at the time. So getting a 10 for that much was great. And finally, we have the last ultra that I own, the Magical Arm Shield. This one I think is Pop 6, unless someone's graded one since I last saw. I got this one for like 600-ish. This one is very low pop. Um, not the most desired one, but TP8 is also pretty tough to find. So it's a pretty cool one because it does have Harpy's Feather Duster in there and all that stuff. So this is a really awesome card to own. Then we have an honorable mention, the one TP Super I own in PSA 10. Another Royal Decree. So this one, did I pull this? No, I think I, I think I traded with Gezi for this and then I graded it. Maybe that's what happened. I can't remember. I did it a long time ago, so I don't really remember where I got this from, but PSA 10, TP6, super rare. Next up, we got some champion pack cards. So first we have the CP01 Satellite Cannon. So ironically, the Ultra Rare is one of the cheapest foils. I think it is the cheapest foil from CP01. If you guys haven't seen when we opened Champion Pack 1 packs, I'll link that up there. Some of the rarest packs in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, we got a ton of all the supers, which are really valuable, like Metamorphosis, Book of Boon. All the super rare versions of those, they go for hundreds of dollars raw. So this one's actually like, I got it for like 300 bucks as a 10. So it's kind of funny how a 10 was worth less than the raw versions of the super rare. So uh, not too desired of a card, but I think it is pretty tough to get since it is CPO one The centering on this is kind of brutal, though. Um, probably would not get a 10 at this point, you know, if we regraded it. Next up, we got some Champion Pack 2 cards that I opened and graded. We have the Ultra Rare Magical Stone Excavation. It did get a 9, unfortunately. Then we have the two Supers, which got 10s, Magician of Faith and Smashing Ground. So pretty cool. The Magician of Faith is a pretty big card because it's a 
nice goat formats like four hundred dollars raw so a 10 is worth obviously more than that then smashing grounds a cool card not worth as much but three champion pack two super rare hollows not super rare hollows this one's kind of random but uh the legendary blue eye shining dragon the one we pulled from the same video opening those champion packs one of my best pulls ever one of definitely my most excited i've ever been i was shocked i was hyped everything all at once i could not believe we pulled this even though it got the nine it does have a little line down here i can't know if you guys can see it it's down here but uh that's probably why i got the nine the centering is also not too good so still really cool to own that card Next up, we have one I haven't showed on the channel in a very long time. We have Elemental Hero Phoenix Enforcer. So the guy that I bought the car for in that video is actually the guy who sold me this card. Um, he sold me this PSA 10. It wasn't ungraded. It was a PSA 10. I think this was the first PSA 10 card I ever bought. So definitely in 2019, maybe even 20. I don't think it was 2018. Um, he sold me this for 300-ish dollars, something like that. It was a little, no, maybe, no, 260. It wasn't even 300. 260 dollars. This card's from Enemy of Justice. It's an ultra rare ulti, really hard to pull. Um, great. I was like, wow, that's a pretty rare card. I think that's a really good price for it. Um, so at the time, 260 was a ton for me. You'd be surprised I didn't always spend this much money on Yu-Gi-Oh. But uh, I was like, can you hold it? And he did. So it was really cool. Now I still have it because it's just like, it's a really awesome card, and it was from a friend, so I like to hold on to it if I can. Then we have the legendary Cyberdark Dragon Ultimate Rare. You guys have seen this plenty of times. We won't spend too much time on it, but we did pull this, graded a 9, regraded it a 10. One of my most valuable cards as well, just a really awesome card. And a uh, big fan of the artwork of this, and the Ultimate Rare just looks really good with it. Here's another one we haven't shown too much either. We have the Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. This one used to be in the background of a lot of videos, so you might be able to see it there, but I didn't really talk about it too much, so... This is from Duelist Pack Kaiba, came out like 2011, I think. Um, but the first edition is a lot tougher to find the Unlimited. You can still find the Unlimited everywhere. The first editions are not too easy. The boxes are very expensive. I did not open this one, but I did find on eBay, you've probably heard it if you're a longtime viewer, $200 an opened box. It had all the pulls, and this was one of them. Also a Ring of Destruction Ultra Rare, both graded PSA 10. I did sell the Ring of Destruction. This one I still have because it's just one of the most epic cards and the most epic rarity, or one of the most epic rarities. We won't say ultimate rare is. Then for some reason, I don't even know why I still have this card, because normally I would sell a card like this. It's like a PSA 9, just kind of a, not a random card, but just like an ultimate rare majestic red dragon, you know, nothing crazy, but I still have it. So I graded it a long time ago. We actually did pull this, so that's probably why. Um, it did get a nine, unfortunately, probably because the back stamp was really bad. But uh, really epic card, and uh, I still have this for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't sell it. Next, we got a couple of ghost rares. We've got the Black Rose Dragon. I never regraded this. I'm going to regrade it eventually. I'm just too scared to crack it. I'm chickening out. It's it's a 10. It's literally a 10. The center on the back is terrible. That is literally the only thing. I mean, the rest of the card is just perfect. The back centering is bad. This card's a 10. That's a 10. If it from That's all I got to say. Then we got the Rainbow Dragon, probably my second favorite pull ever. I don't know. I can't remember. I did my top pulls. I don't remember what I put first. Pretty sure Shiny Dragon always won. This one was always up there. One of the most beautiful cards I own, Ghost Rare. The back did have scratching on it, and then PSA got that crap right in the middle, which is annoying. But that is really cool, PSA 9. And another Ghost Rare I have not shown in a very, very long time. I meant to show this in my Ghost Rare video, and I forgot to show it, so I showed a picture of it. We have the Ghost Rare Red Eyes from the Duelist Pack. I think it's like Duelist, whatever they call it in Japan. Um, but it's a really epic card. It's actually worth quite a bit now. Ghost Rare Red Eyes. I don't know. Maybe I I'll maybe should sell this because if they make a English version, I don't know if it'll kill the value of this one. But it was pulled by Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube on his channel for me. Like it was kind of like a box break situation. I just like bought a box from him and he opened it for me. And I got the Ghost Rare. So... It kind of was an epic moment like a long time ago, one of my first ever Ghost Rares. So I kind of love this card, so I'll probably hold on to it. Here are a couple cards that I also got from Rhyme Style. So in that box that he sent me, he sent me two PSA 10s, just an absolute madman. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and Legendary Dragon of White, PSA graded cards, like just crazy. This is like actually like decent value. There's like a couple, like a few hundred bucks worth in these cards. So I was like, dude, you're, in, you're nuts for sending me these. So shout out to Rhyme Style again. Make sure you follow him if you don't already. He has a million subscribers, so you probably do. If you don't follow his Yu-Gi-Oh channel, I think he has like 80. So he sells a ton there. So you guys go check him out. Then we have a Charge of the Light Brigade. This is also supposed to be sold, but if you guys have ever sold on Instagram, just because somebody says they'll buy it doesn't mean they will. There definitely, there's a strong chance they'll come up with an excuse. 
they will find the weirdest excuse you've ever heard and they'll act like it's 100% legit. You just gotta go with it. So this might be sold, it might not, we'll see. But right now, we did pull this from the Duelist Genesis, not right now, but right now I still own it. So PSA 9, it didn't get a 10 unfortunately, so that's probably why I will sell it. If you guys have been longtime fans of the channel, this is a card I could not sell. I had to hang on to these. Three ultimate rare clock tower prisons. If you have not seen the Enemy of Justice videos, you don't understand why this is hilarious, but I got not one, not two, got three Gym Mint 10 at Clock Tower Prison. So it's just ridiculous that they all graded 10, but it's pretty funny. And finally, a set, a really awesome set. We have the Super Rares from McDonald's Pack, PSA 10. We have the Dark Piercing Light, the Goddess of Whim, and the Takraminos, and the two Ultra Rares, Millennium Shield and Cosmo Queen. So we have the big five, the five hollows from McDonald's pack one, the, one of the most nostalgic sets of all time. If you lived in the United States, everyone went to McDonald's and got them some cards. It was crazy. So I got this one back in the day. One of my favorite cards because I pulled it from McDonald's. It was really cool. So those five cards are really cool to own. Um, they were super cheap when I got them. I don't know what they're worth now, but pretty awesome. That's my entire PSA graded Yu-Gi-Oh collection. There's also Beckett cards. I own a few of those. As for Yu-Gi-Oh and PSA, those are the cards that I own. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments some of your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh PSA graded cards. Let me know what you think about my PSA collection. If you noticed some cards that I sold that you really loved or maybe that you know that I loved, I'm not going to say which one. I'm missing one of them particularly right now, but you guys can let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys later. Peace. Elemental Hero, Dark Bright. Boom! Oh, <laughs>